Sorry, guys. Been a long time. Been a long time. Got the old uh, diesel heater. Check it out. Yeah, it's just like my one I got on my porch. You don't know what a diesel heater is. It's a diesel air heater. It's an all-in-one unit. There's a gas. There's a fuel tank for diesel fuel. This is the controller. It's a little remote. I don't really, you know, it works in my house. But anyway, this is the heater right here. The output. This is the stuff it came with. You got, you got like a heat director pipe. Um, this is the stainless steel exhaust. Well, this doesn't look very stainless steel. You got an air intake filter. You got a muffler. And uh, some clamps and some wire. So, I run my one on my porch. I've got a uh, 110. To, um, it goes up to 48 volts. It's a variable AC to DC controller. It does up to 480 watts. So, I just set it at like 14 volts and runs the one on my porch. Now, the one on my porch is the type that goes on an RV. So, it doesn't have this box or this fancy handle um, this just has some wiring on the back you know you just the two wires black and red um, this is the 8 kilowatt unit here's a junk manual they come with uh, ha, cool knife I open it with anyway so Chinese diesel air heaters there's the exhaust pipe you duct this outside uh, in my case um, what I'm going to do, I am going to duct it outside. This thing right here, here, let me get the camera off. I'll set this back down. I was just checking something. So, let me grab the camera. So, let's just go over here. There's the Chinese diesel heater. I'm going to duct the exhaust. I'm going to put this up on little blocks. There's an input there. I ground it out a little bit with my Dremel, but it's the same. Pretty much diameter is this exhaust. So, yeah, I'm going to be able to fit that right around there. Open this end up a little bit. I'll put a piece of... Uh, tubing if you come over here I've got this tubing just made a little aluminum gasket and then this is going on a hole there's a copper pipe and some aluminum in between the wood here plus this the idea is this thing weighs to over 200 pounds it's pretty heavy old decorative uh, radiator for a steam radiator but the exhaust that comes out of this 8 kilowatt heater is pretty hot, like 300 degrees. So my idea is that some of that heat I'm going to recover and store in this big heavy thing. And then it's going to go out the window. This is just a test though. This is in its permanent resting place. I just want to see if it actually gets warm or if it's pointless. If we're to make a nice seat for on my porch. If it gets too hot for that. I think it will just be a nice seat for my porch it's about two foot high and but i don't know i could put it down here on the floor too um but yeah anyway so chinese diesel heaters though i've got a bunch of them they're great so if you want to hook up something you can get this all in one unit or you've seen my other videos or thousands of videos i'm sure you've seen them or even have one, but they're great. If you don't have one, if you're using like propane heat, yeah, that works for some circumstances. It's good. I've used, I have all types. I've literally got like, there's one of those cabinet ones back there. There's my little wood stove. Got a mini wood stove down there, a little can style. So yeah, I got a lot of, I know a lot about heaters. So, um, but these are, these are great for a lot of circumstances. Like this heater tested it can heat about a thousand square feet, no problem. 
is pretty damn good. Um, that's bottom line. This is like a 28,000 BTU heater. It uses about 100, 100 watts for a couple minutes on startup. And then it drops down to an average of between 10 and 20 watts all the time that it's running full blast. And then when it goes to its low, it's just got high and low mode. Low mode's like idling. And it just kicks out a little bit of warm. Um, the exhaust, it burns a lot dirtier though when it goes on that mode. So it's best to run these things as much as possible full blast. But if you're running this on full blast, it's making 28,000 BTUs. Um, so you just keep it running. This one has the built in fuel tank for your diesel. And, uh, it doesn't use much diesel. So if you run it pretty much all day, um, they say about, I've done the math between 16 and 20 amp hours, depending on how hard you're using it. Or if you're barely using it, if it's just maintaining the temperature of something, and let's just say it's on 50% of the time, you're only going to use like 10 amp hours or less. But if you're going to, um, if you're going to use it, um, basically all the time, it's going to use the 20 amp hours for sure. And, uh, the diesel, maybe one, maybe just over a, a quart or a liter a day on low. And then like, if you're full blasting it 24 hours, like I have in the past, um, then you're using almost a gallon. If you just have that sucker kicking all day and that's like $3 a day, $90 a month. To run that on full blast all the time. It's not, it's economical. I mean, with the AC to DC inverter just plugs in the wall, you don't, I mean, it's not that 20 amp hours on a 12 volt battery because that's what this runs on is, it's designed to run on 12 volts. So that's what this input is. That's why I need that DC to, or AC to DC converter. Um, I was going to try it with this old fashioned one I got over there, but it's only 40 watts and I don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to get that inverter and hook it up. All right, back again. Got her all hooked up now for the first trial run anyway. See how good she is. I got her attached under there. That's the exhaust. I didn't hook up, hook up the intake. It came with the intake muffler here. It's inside this tube. Came with this. That's the air intake muffler. I'm not worried about the sound. It's just gonna pull air from in here. Um, but yeah, the combustion air goes out there through this big heavy beast. It's about 200 pounds of cast iron. Comes through my little homemade stuff there just had to do a little machining on these pipes to get them all airtight i've got copper pipe inside of here copper pipe inside of here um yeah this is just got a gasket layers it's not sealed at all there that might leak it's the only spot i can see that might leak maybe on the ends we'll see we're gonna fire her up for the first time so what this is is that inverter box or that uh, AC to DC 110 to, to it goes up to 48 volts you see that's the model number if you want to get one you could run up to probably four of these heaters because it can do 480 watts I've ran a trolling motor with this actually I had two of them together and ran one, a real powerful trolling motor but I ran a regular one off just one of these boxes it didn't even push it so yeah, that's just a plug here. Let's plug it in. So it came on to 14.3. This came on. Let's switch the mode here. I think I wanna, oh well. I don't know how to turn up. Alright, 
I didn't even hardly fire up yet, so let's just do this. Let's get that. Oh, P5.5 is as high as it goes. So we're going to turn it on. You just push on like that. It says it's 4 degrees Celsius in here. Got our little icons down there. It's, the internal thing is 3 degrees Celsius. See, that's the temperature of the um, internal. Uh, it's got a temperature sensor on the... Uh, the heat exchanger in there, it's aluminum, and you can look inside of there and see it, but I just have this little cover on there right now. But once that starts going up, that means it's ignited. Um, normally I have this thermostat set on temperature, I still have to figure out how to put it on temp, so right now I'm just going to run it at maximum. This is all out. Alright, just leave it run here. Oh, it just started firing randomly it like cut off for about two minutes Ooh, it's making some sound turn on temperatures 10 13 let's go outside and see if it's smoky Turn the light on. Mm. Oh, smell. I can smell it. I can smell the fumes. But no smoke. Nice. Alright, we're back. Okay, now well, this is at 29 degrees, 30, so it's heating up. Let's see if this muffler's already hot. Oh, oh yeah, it's blowing some heat, baby. Nice. So one thing about these, you don't ever want to just shut them off if you have one. You don't just unplug it, it has a cool down cycle, so you just... In this model, you hold that middle button down, that's on and off, so every time you hold it down for about three seconds, it'll cycle between on or off. When you go to off, the screen goes out, that's one feature I like, it doesn't use any power hardly. I think like, I can measure it's like one watt, it uses on standby, so, but yeah, everything's warming up. The internal uh it's at 62 yeah it's going to show that he like this uh turnable aimable vent nice I still don't smell anything except the China stuff burning on you know my tank the gas is smoking alright let's shut it off so we can peel that shit off Got a little bit of leaks. I'll be right back. With you. Well, as things do, they sometimes don't go as planned. But the good thing, this warmed up a little bit, so there's heat going through here. Obviously, this didn't heat up yet. This got so hot that the glue on the aluminum tape started to melt. But luckily, the only place I used it was here. And I did, and I did. You, oh, I used a little bit there. Yep, on both sides of there, I used it, and it started smoking and leaking too. So I've got no problem with this gasket. So I'll just have to reproduce this gasket over here. So till next time, if you like seeing the diesel heater, how to hook them up indoors, kind of a weird setup, but. Normally you would just duck that outside and make a little uh, barrier gasket. Right now it's doing its cool down cycle. See, it's a blowing out heat. You don't want to just shut it off because it'll fry out the electronics. Kind of cool. I got a fuel gauge here. You can see my level's about halfway up. That's cooler. Very cool. 
They also include a little slot here for your screwdriver when you're doing your uh, tightening the hose clean on your exhaust there. But it doesn't smell like diesel in here, which is awesome. It smells like the burnt glue because of my stupid gasket thing that I made there. That was kind of stupid. But we'll fix that. We didn't get glue everywhere, luckily. Just use all foil next time and big thick layer of it. And then we'll put that tape over it or some hose clamps with uh, some kind of ducting and hose clamps. And we use this, uh, use this thing. I got some aluminum stuff too, but anyway, until next time, thanks for watching.